like nostalgic movie review from Nerdy Married Man. Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to New and Nostalgic. I am David. And I'm Steven. And today we're doing something a little different. We, yes. uh, we're doing a video game adaptation, but this week we are looking at a TV show, The Last of Us. Yes. This obviously, um, it's recently just came out, 2023. Uh, it's rated TV mature. Um, each episode's about average, about 50 minutes length. Uh, there's nine episodes. Uh, after a global pandemic destroys civilization, a hardened survivor takes charge of a 14-year-old girl who may be humanity's last hope. Um, this is created by Neil Druckmann, uh, the original creators of the game. Yeah, and uh, for the cast of this, we got uh, the main two, Pedro Pascal as uh, Joel and Bella Ramsey as Ellie. And then we also have Anna Torv, uh, Lamar Johnson, Merle uh Dandridge, which uh, she plays Marlene, and she also played Marlene in the game. Yep. We also have Nico Parker, and then a few other cameos. We have Jeffrey Pierce, who voiced Tommy in the game. Yep. And then we also have Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson make some cameos as well. And then one other stand-up performance for me that I have to mention is Nick Offerman. Yeah, absolutely. Nick Offerman is a great, great addition to this show. I did not know he was capable of this style of acting and something this serious and the way his role is. I'll talk about it more later, but man, if that guy doesn't get an Oscar, I'm going to be furious. <laughs> he killed it. He killed, killed it. it. Uh, yeah, overall, it is a very well-made show, not only just as a show, but I think it's one of HBO's most impressive. Um, but it's also a great remake. Yes. Uh, of a video game adaptation like it's it's really well done this is one of the few things i've ever seen that adapts something with so much heart and it really helps that it was the original creator working on both of them but this one the things that changed for the show makes sense for why they changed them compared to the game and we'll talk about some of the differences here and there but there's honestly they go b for b mainly with the the main story and they keep most things really true to the story and they turned what is typically a, like a 12 to 15 hour gameplay into a probably like seven hours total story yeah, like nine episodes so yeah probably yeah like seven to eight hours yeah like it's, it's really just like incredible like what they were able to do with just nine episodes yeah and i mean i i love what they did with the nine episodes part of me does wish that they did do a few more episodes because there definitely could have been a lot more fleshing out of characters and yes. more to the story. I mean, they they hit all of the main story beats, but they definitely could have done a little bit more. Yeah. But I mean, I'm not saying it's it's bad, though. Like, I still really enjoyed the show. They took out a lot of because there's almost always either stealth or major conflict and fighting throughout the entirety of the game. And there's not a ton of actual combat in the series. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not upset about them taking the combat out. Um, Cause I mean, they still had some great, yes. you know, encounters and, you know, fighting and stuff, but I think they could have spent more time on the infected. Like they 100%. I, I, I wish they would have gone a little bit more back and forth because, I mean, mm -hmm. there were a lot of infected in the few, first few episodes. And then all of a sudden it's like you don't see an infected except for once in a while yeah. in the last few episodes. And they played a much bigger part in the game. And, yeah. I mean, there is also the human side of the story, which is important. But I feel like they kind of got away from the apocalypse factor. Yeah, I think they went more for the storytelling and more for the – this is about humanity and people than it is about the infected. Whereas the game was still a game dealing with the zombie apocalypse. And they kind of go over like what happens year. Like this is like 20 years after the initial apocalypse. Well, I, th I think the game did well balancing out between yes. how humans respond to an outbreak and also having the infected side of things. Yes. Whereas the show, like, it did a good job, but the infected kind of just take a back seat after the mm -hmm. first few episodes, and you almost forget that they're in an outbreak situation, you know? And, and it's kind of crazy, because, like, some characters have way more story than they had in the game, and then other characters have way less story than they had in the game. Yeah, I, I agree with that. That's why I wish we got a little bit more time with yeah. the characters 
Yeah, 100%. More time with Tess, more time with Tommy, more time with David, more time with Henry and Sam. I mean, on on the plus side of things, everyone in the show did a phenomenal job. I think Pedro and Bella, like, they encapsulate their characters so well. Yeah, and honestly. They, they, they are the characters from the game, but then they also put their own spin on things. Like, they, they yeah. change the characters in their own way, but not in like a bad way they're still joel and ellie but they kind of put their own take on it we should get a our like initial ratings for this i definitely think this is a must watch um i'm definitely gonna buy this when it comes out i hope they have extended edition of this when it comes out with more stuff and maybe an additional episode or two yeah i think uh this show is definitely worth watching and i think this show like i still enjoyed it but after playing the video game like it, i almost didn't feel surprised by anything because yeah i mean you know the yeah. story needs to come in so i think the show will kind of hit people harder if you haven't played the game 100 um it either way if you've played the game or not it is a very entertaining show and it's worth the story and the experience outside of the video game yeah i definitely think that you'll enjoy it as a video game adaptation but there is some things that you'll just like find missing in the series as someone who's played the game multiple times or if you love it as much as like we do for those of you who don't know last of us is actually really important to both david and i it was actually a game that david initially showed me and uh it was the first video game that ever made me cry and i never thought a video game could make me cry and david's like well let me show you this game and mm-hmm. we sat down he played the first like half hour segment or the first 15 minute segment or whatever with sarah and oh my god, I cried so hard. We were both sitting there crying together. He's like, I've played this several times. I still cry at it. And it was such a touching thing that we actually both have uh, Ellie's tattoo tattooed onto us with the the Firefly symbol and Ellie's dagger and stuff that we actually both got a brotherly tattoo to symbolize how much we both love this game together. Yeah, it's such a phenomenal game. It's a special game. So oh, I, yeah. a- everyone out there should play it and if you don't play video games maybe watch a playthrough or something yeah and if you want to hear more about the game uh my uh buddy and i uh scott we actually have soul of a gamer podcast as well and we actually did a whole episode on that um it is a little hard to get through because scott is very anti-joel so if you love that character it's a little hard to get through some of the bashing that scott gives him but (laughs) it's still entertaining and he does have his good points with some of the things that he does say and it is saying that the more and more i listen to that episode again the more and more i'm like i get what you're saying with this i just hate it (laughs) but yes all right uh i guess we're gonna go uh we're probably going to go try to go like kind of look chronologically through the story, kind of tell you guys what the story actually is, and then we'll talk about our favorite moments. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess uh, it begins with this uh, news interview, and someone is explaining how cordyceps work uh, on animals. And, you know, it's a, it's a fungus that kind of takes over the brain, and it really segues nicely into how the outbreak starts. And I love this. Because the game does go over it, but I love seeing more on how things started. And this game also gives a, or this movie show. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it, it gives a lot more context behind the outbreak and how people react to it. So, like, it shows across the world where the outbreak started, people reacting to it. And it shows a doctor being brought in to take a look at a body that was infected and seeing how it works and it's just really cool seeing how it all started and then we get into where the game starts with uh joel and sarah and i'll I'll let steven take it away yeah so in this scene we uh get to know sarah a little bit it's it's joel's daughter this is where we kind of see her interactions with uh, these neighbor characters. We didn't really get to have any interaction in the game. This was something that was added in. And they're talking about like baking cookies and doing all these things. And she's getting ready to celebrate her father's birthday. And she's got him like this watch and everything, which I love that they redid that scene of her giving the watch to him and the whole, where did you get the money to do this? Drugs. I said hardcore drugs. It's fantastic. It's it's so funny. Um, I actually love the actress who played Sarah. I think she really nailed it so incredibly well. And um, we kind of get the first glimpses of the apocalypse happening. And this is where 
their neighbor starts going after Sarah and they go through and they start seeing everyone becoming infected all at once. And you see people eating each other and they get into a car accident. You see planes crashing. It's, it's pretty crazy. All the stuff that happens right at the beginning. And And I love, I love the lead up to the night where everything goes to hell. Yes. Cause throughout the day you see Sarah going about her day and you keep hearing in the background, new stories of stuff happening. And you see Mm -hmm. like uh, SWAT vehicles drive by, but it's, it's all in the background. It's not very noticeable. And even you see people acting strangely in the background. Every once in a while, like they get that twitch or they're just acting weird. And then when everything comes together at night where you see the neighbors attack Sarah and everything go down and the car crash in the airplane, it just, it's so well played out and building up to that moment. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I absolutely love, um, cause They don't explicitly say this in the show, but they talked about in the after um, they had like a bunch of stuff of like the making of the show after each episode. And they talked about how the first episode is actually like the most important for realizing how people got infected. And if you pay attention, it really does tell you. So cordyceps actually of fungus, fungus and mushrooms are actually something that's in most yeast products. And so Anything that has uh, cooked with like yeast or like breads or anything like that actually have uh, mushrooms and stuff in it. So cordyceps went into that and FDA regulations still allow some mushrooms and stuff, some particles of mushrooms to be in the things. So anyone who was eating anything with bread was becoming infected. And they really tried showing that because at the beginning they talk about uh, Sarah's trying to get her dad a cake. He forgets to get a cake, so they don't eat any cake. He didn't have any pancake mix to make them in the morning, so they don't eat the pancakes. He gets offered biscuits by the neighbors. He doesn't eat the biscuits. The biscuits that he was feeding his uh, mom that was the first one we saw to turn was because she ate the cookies and the biscuits. <laughs> and I was like, that's 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 so good. Like That is a yeah. really fantastic way to infect as many people as it did instantly, like that fast. Mm-hmm. Because you think about it, like if some one person were just to turn into a zombie and then like bite one person, it would take a while for it to like get to everybody. But if it's in something we all eat every day, that's insanity. So and I guess moving on, we get the crash and the car flips over. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Sarah hurt her leg. So Joel picks her up and he Tommy and Sarah are running off and trying to get away and just trying to get out of town because everyone is just scrambling and. They end up uh, getting separated from Tommy and Joel and carrying Sarah down the hill being chased by infected and a, a military person saves them and then uh, over the radio gets ordered to kill them. So uh, he opens fire and Joel gets hit and falls to the ground and drops Sarah and a uh, military guy goes to finish him off and Tommy saves him, kills the military guy and then they notice that Sarah got hit straight in the gut. And she, oh. yeah, that's yeah. Uh, but the, the way the actress did it just pulls you well, met this character for one episode. And she does that crying uh, whimper that Sarah does in the game. So perfectly that <laughs> like, oh, it's just, it's so gut wrenching. It is brutal and beautiful at the same time but yeah then it it ends up you know cutting to black 20 years later as joel is holding his daughter dead in his arms like praying saying like please don't do this yeah it's just the most heart-wrenching thing and then it cuts to yeah 20 years later yep and this is where we get into you kind of see joel and he's uh working around this girl tess and they're trying there you find out the like smugglers and they uh, smuggle things in and out of the quarantine zones um, and they get ripped off by this guy who ends up selling their stuff to the leader of the fireflies Marlene and she's like hey actually I got shot I need you to take this girl this girl she is Ellie she's immune I know that's crazy to believe but she got bit over well, a month ago she, she doesn't tell them she's immune oh yeah that's right that's right. She just says, I need you to smuggle her to another that's right. Firefly base. That's all you need to know. She is important. I was jumping ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you find out she's important. You, they need to smuggle her out of the city and try to get her to another Firefly encampment. And she said she'll 
pay them with like uh, the truck battery they need to get out of there if they do it. And they're like, oh, fine. <laughs> yeah, they go uh, to smuggle her out and they get stopped by soldiers and they all get scanned to see if they're infected. And right as they're scanning Ellie, Ellie stabs the guy in the leg with her knife to get away and they take out the soldiers and then Tess picks up the the reader and sees that Ellie is infected, and Ellie ex- shows her arm and has a bite that is two weeks old, and it's healed. But you can see the infection on her mm-hmm. arm; it's just yeah, it's just scarred over now. And so they decide that you know they're gonna finish their job. They need to you know get car parts and stuff, so they're gonna continue. And I I love this scene too because after that and they're like still a little worried about her like if she actually is like not going to turn. Um, when they sit down to eat after that, Tess and Joel are both eating jerky and she's actually eating a sandwich with bread. And so it really emphasized that again that she doesn't it doesn't matter to her that she's eating the cordyceps or whatever. And so then after that, um, we get a amazingly touching story of Bill and Frank. And we had a lot of things in the video game that alluded to a relationship between them, but we never actually saw Frank besides his dead body in the game. Yeah, did we even see his dead body? I think we just got a note. Wasn't he the one that was hanging with the dead note? That's that's right. That it, was, but it was yeah. in a different building, yeah. Because before we get too far into the Bill and Frank, we did skip over right at the end when uh, Tess gets taken Oh, yes, yes. So they they get to that Firefly base in the capital, and it's already been run down, and uh, infected start swarming the place. So Tess gets Joel and Ellie out of there to go on their own and sacrifices herself to stop the infected from coming in. Because she had actually, both her and Ellie got bit during the clicker section. Yeah, they both got bit and... Yeah, so so it's just like it's too late for me. I'm gonna stop them while I can. Which um, was it different from the video game? But I still really love the way they did it, and it was really still beautiful and touching and gorgeous way to do Tess's death. Yeah, in the game, the soldiers chase them, and mm-hmm. Tess dies fighting off the soldiers instead of the infected. So it is is a little different, but it gets the same point across. Yeah, they're both done well. But anyway. Now we get to episode three um, with Bill and Frank. Yes. Um, this is the one of the best representations for LGBT I have ever seen in anything, film or movies ever. Uh, this is by far, it is basically the story, the first 15 minutes of the movie up, but as a, an entire episode with Nick Offerman and... I can't remember the other guy's name off the top of my head, but their performance together of their built, like budding romance throughout the zombie apocalypse and the joys and stuff they have of finding love in horrible times and just like the smallest things, like when they get strawberry seeds and he's been hiding, making strawberries for him and like they're feeding each other the strawberries and like, oh my God. And they're like crying. And I'm like, it's, it's seriously one of the most beautiful episodes of television I've ever seen in my entire life. It's, I, I cried probably for fucking 15 minutes straight. Like, oh my God, this is, oh. if you don't watch anything else of this, watch this episode. <laughs> also, uh, Frank was played by Murray Bartlett and yes. he does a fantastic job. Like he and Bill's relationship throughout the episode is just amazing watching it grow and then watching how it comes to an end. It's just, it's so well-rounded. It's yes. perfect. Uh, yeah. That throughout the episode there, you see them kind of growing together and you see even flashbacks of when was it Tess and Joel originally yep. find that, that town that Bill and Frank are in and see how they, they meet. And then the, after like the strawberry scene you mentioned, um, it cuts to when they're older, you know, years yeah. later and how Frank is, you know, sick. He's been dying for a while and he's like finally ready to go. So he makes Bill promise him to have one last day to just be a perfect day before, you know, he leaves. Oh, and it's such a romantic day and such beautiful love uh, like ah it's i'm most teary i just talking and thinking about it <laughs> it's it's amazing and you know they you know of course decide to go out together so mm-hmm. they do they you know 
put some stuff in some wine they're drinking and then just go to bed and never wake back up. And the episode kind of ends with Joel and Ellie getting to that town and finding the note that Bill left for Joel and the, you know, Bill left all of his weapons and his truck and everything that he had to Joel so that Joel can, you know, use it as he needed. Yeah. And I love that they have a little bit of Bill's quippy humor in the note where he's like, yeah, uh, he found the note, so it must be usual. Other people would have died. Ha 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 ha. And like, I, I, I love the episode. I am a little sad that we did not get to see, because in the game, uh, yes. Joel and Ellie find Frank alive, or Bill alive. Yeah. Because uh, Frank is already gone. And it's just, I liked the interactions between Joel, Ellie, and Bill. Especially um, Bill and Joel, or Ellie, I mean. <laughs> yeah, they have some great moments in the game. But I think the show handled that really well. And it's one of the changes, like one of the biggest changes. And I mean, it's it's handled nicely. Yeah. Um, but then uh, after that episode, we move on to the next town as they're crossing. They're making their way west to try to find the Firefly base, to, the main one, to get Ellie to. And they end up coming across two brothers, Henry and Sam. Mm-hmm. And those characters are they're so cool, both in the game and the show. There there are also the characters in the show that I wish we got a little bit more time yeah. with them to flesh them out. But uh they changed Sam a little bit. They actually made him deaf in this show. And yeah. it's really cool seeing the behind the scenes of the deaf actor interacting with everyone and teaching uh people sign language and whatnot. It's really cool. Yeah. No, the deaf representation in movies and TV recently has been really incredible. And all the different things they did with that is really cool. Like, even the way they had the the same conversations that they had in the game between Sam and Ellie, they did it with, like, an etch-a-sketch kind of thing, where it's, like, the writing thing where you can erase it really quickly. It's or it's one of the magnetic ones or whatever, but, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> it, and it's done so well seeing how they grow and while the kids are getting to know each other and playing games and they find, you know, some underground base stuff, it, you know, the conversations that Joel and Henry have are really cool talking about humanity and talking about how they're both not necessarily good people or Mm -hmm. bad people, but they do what they need to do to survive and help the people that they love. Yep. And I guess that's one of the things that is kind of talked about through the whole show and uh i guess before we move on uh i both love and hate it uh the message that joel it keeps keeps being told to joel is you know protect the ones you love it's like the main Mm -hmm. plot point or i guess message for joel but um and i love it like in the game he learns that through i guess context clues and through other people kind of like in the show but i feel like the show kind of handholds with the message kind of just every time there's little downtime it's people talking to joel telling him how he should feel instead of i guess making it fit better i don't know how no i i can kind of see what you're saying with that because like this one definitely like in the game uh joel's a lot more even brutal than he is in the show and really makes you think about everything he does so much more and really brings up into attention like, oh, like, well, you were like so shitty back then. I kind of like don't like you now. And the only person who does love you is this person that you've been protecting pretty much. And they kind of really yeah. like shoehorn that throughout the entire thing. But yeah, I guess moving on from that back to Henry and Sam, the the episode's going great. They're trying to get out of the city and the kids are playing they're having a great time they finally get out of the city and of course like uh all apocalypses all good things must come to an end Mm -hmm. and uh the infected kind of break out of the ground yeah it's really interesting how it happens because i guess the ground's been hollowing out because there's tunnels underneath this town and we get to see like our first bloater and you know all these infected come out and it is absolutely terrifying um and they, you know, there's other people that had been chasing down Henry and Sam, and they ended up getting caught in this giant yep. skirmish of infected. And of course, uh, Joel, Ellie, Henry, and Sam get out, and they make it to a motel. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, while they're there, uh, you know, they're in separate rooms, and Joel and Henry are talking, just kind of keeping watching in the bedroom area. Uh, Ellie and Sam are 
talking and it's it's really nice but sam reveals that he had been infected he got scratched or bit and uh so ellie is like you know she actually cuts her own hand and thinks that you know i don't know how it works but maybe since i'm immune i can help him so she kind of rubs her blood over the wound of course doesn't work and uh it's a really sad ending you know that in the morning wake up and sam is turned and attacks ellie and unfortunately uh henry ends up shooting sam his own brother yeah and he just can't deal with that fact so after he ends up turning the gun on himself and it's such a heart-wrenching it really is heart-wrenching and it was one of the things that they adapted so perfectly that entire scene it's just ridiculous but it's heartbreaking and heart-wrenching and you're just like damn (laughs) like i was not expecting that and it happens so quickly that you don't really get a lot of time to think about it I mean, this this show really takes you through the ringer yeah. of emotion. It's absolutely heart-wrenching. But after that episode, they move on to Wyoming. Yes. So in Wyoming, they actually stumble upon some uh, people, and they find out that they're, they, they, they send them to this town, and they find Tommy there. And this is the place where uh, Joel hasn't been able to reach Tommy for several months now, and uh realize that tommy's been in this town that kind of keeps to themselves they don't really tell people about it they uh try to be self-sufficient and everyone holds their own weight and he's got like a a new wife now and everything and it's kind of like the perfect life that joel kind of wants wanted for him and he kind of wants for him and ellie now and he's kind of getting glimpses of like oh wow like there actually is ways to do this and maybe there is ways that we can just be farmers and be happy and just live normal lives and not have to deal with the shit anymore. And I'm tired of killing and I'm tired of being forced to be this horrible person. And, uh, it starts really looking in uh, a lot of those things introspectively. And this is where we have the famous fight where Joel's also thinking like he's having a lot of heart problems and he thinks that everyone that's been around him has been dying and he, thinks that Tommy would be better suited to take Ellie further to the other Firefly camp. And since he used to be a Firefly, he probably knows the land better and knows where to go more. And he's like, I just, I can't keep doing this and I don't want to keep doing this. And I don't think she likes me and no, I just need to just be an old man and die pretty much like just kind of just giving up entirely. And you have a great scene where Ellie and him, have a good fight with each other and brings up Sarah and brings up all this other stuff. And she's just like, I wouldn't be any, like you think I I'm afraid all the time, but I'm way less afraid with you. Everything I do is because of you and because of who you are. And I love you and I want to be with you. And it really hits him then like how much they mean to each other and how much they've grown with each other and the things they've accomplished together. And, she doesn't want to go with anybody else. She doesn't, she just wants to be with Joel and it's a really, really amazing moment. And they finally like agree to go out on their own together and yeah, really well done. Um, and I guess after that episode, you know, Joel and Ellie start making their way out and then we get the next episode, which is a kind of background story it's based off of the dlc of the game called left behind and it is the story of ellie and her friend riley and how they got infected and how ellie realizes she is immune i absolutely love the placement of this episode because this is right before we get ellie being on her own a little bit and i think this was a perfect time to retrace that because i was wondering if they were going to do left behind at all because it's the DLC for the game, and we got it after the game was done. But I really think it really fits perfectly right in this spot. I think this was one of the best decisions, and if you're playing the game, this is honestly where I would probably stop the game and play the Left Behind and then go back to it, because it's it's too perfect not to have it right in this spot. Yeah, it works really well. I guess right before the episode, I forgot to mention, they uh, Joel and Ellie make it to a college, mm-hmm. a uh Un, unnamed college in Colorado that happens to have the colors of green and gold and has a ram mascot. Yep. You know the one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's definitely a nice wink. Uh, 
but at this uh, college, they, of course, find no fireflies. And as they're leaving, some people attack Joel and Ellie. And Joel takes down one of them. But as he takes down the one, the guy ends up stabbing Joel with a broken handle of a baseball bat, a wooden bat. Yeah. Now, it happens a little differently in the game. Yes. But same basic thing happens. Uh, but so they end up getting on their horse. And Ellie and Joel leave. And they find a place to kind of stash and hide out in the basement of this house where Ellie is kind of taking care of Joel as yeah. he heals and she's trying to figure it out. But anyway, from there we get the cut to left behind. Yeah. And this episode's really cool because it shows, you know, a flashback of Ellie training, get, or getting trained by these soldiers, this military group in the quarantine. And they're basically training her to have a job as a soldier isn't it fedra or whatever yeah fedra and she uh it is discovered that her friend riley had gone missing it like a couple weeks before that mm -hmm. and uh during the night as ellie's going going to sleep riley sneaks into her bedroom and says hey i got something to show you and turns out riley had joined the fireflies and she decides to bring ellie to the mall to show her something special oh that's such a great Honestly, the whole mall scene in this was fantastic. There was a couple things that I was uh, missing a little bit. Like, I really wanted the squirt gun fight. <laughs> uh, but it's really cool. Like, you know, Ellie's just kind of been stuck in this Fedra training. And Riley, now that she's moved on from that and become a Firefly, she wants to show Ellie some fun in the world and give her a great day. And, mm. I mean, it turns out she's trying to give her a, the best day ever to say goodbye because she's leaving to yeah. go on a mission for the Fireflies. But she shows her all these cool things throughout the mall, like a uh, was it a merry-go-round with the, the mm -hmm. horses on it, the uh, merry-go-round carousel uh, thing. Yeah, and the yeah, and then they show her like uh, an arcade, play some video games. They play Mortal Kombat two, and yeah, then they uh, end in like a Halloween store. So they're like trying on masks and dancing to music. It's really fun. Oh yeah, another LGBT moment that's pretty great with the. Uh, their kind of young budding lesbian romance that I think they did well in the game and in the movie or not movie, the show. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was really cute in the show. Kind of like you see hints throughout the episode that they both kind of have a thing for each other, but they're afraid to act on it. Cause they yeah. don't know if the other one feels the same. <laughs> exactly. So at the end of the episode, uh, you know, before the inevitable sad happens, they, uh, you know, finally express how they feel about each other. And Ellie's like, I don't want you to go. And Riley's like, well, why don't you come with me? And, you know, mm. they end up like, oh, let's just stay together. But anyway, as all things come, good things come to an end, uh, an infected is in the mall and ends up uh, attacking them. And Riley looks over and sees that Ellie got scratched and Ellie's or got bit. And she's like wiping it away. And then Riley had got bit on her hand as well. So, after they took out the infected, they decide they're going to just go out together. And I think they quote, say like, uh, let's get crazy together and see what happens or something. Uh, let's wait it out and lose our minds together. Or like, That's it. Yeah. Yep. So, and of course we find out that Ellie is immune and she ended up having, it never shows it in the show, but yeah, it, she says she had to kill Riley. Yeah. And that was her she turned. first kill. Her first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. her, I guess technically her second, because then she killed the infected. Oh yeah, so first human, first like uh, first human kill. Yeah, human live human kill. I don't know. Yeah, whatever um, you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a really well done episode, and then it segues nicely. Excuse me, back into uh, the next episode where winter winter has come. Yeah, winter's come. And Ellie had found some threading and stitching to close Joel's wound and she decides she's going to leave to go find something to help him more. Cause of course he's like, has an infection and needs help. He needs yeah. medicine. And they're running out of food. Um, so then this is where we get into Ellie going out to go hunting and she, uh, finds a deer and shoots the deer, um, chasing the deer, all the blood trails and stuff. And, uh, when she comes up to the deer, she runs into David and our, uh, first appearance of Troy Baker <laughs> as a new character, James in this episode. And 
it it goes through the whole thing where they're like, hey, we need that food for our town. And it kind of gives you a glimpse of uh, David's town and the people that he has and how he's like a religious cult leader there. Kind of is the best way to describe him. He's very, uh, he uses like Christian values to control these people and say that he's like close to God and he's their leader. And it's a little like weird or some of that stuff, but then, um, it plays it off at first as something, you know, normal and like uh, community driven, yeah. but it ends up becoming something crazy. But as they're standing over the deer, Ellie's holding them at gunpoint and says, like, you know, that David's trying to negotiate to take only half the deer or something. And she's like, you know what? Do you have medicine? And he says, yeah. And so he sends the other guy away to get medicine. She's like, if you bring me back medicine, I'll give you half the deer. Yeah. But you have to stay here, send your friend to go get it. Yep. So he does. Yep. <laughs> so we get that. And uh, then we get David and Ellie talking to each other and while they're waiting and they're questioning a bunch of things. And he's kind of trying to figure out like who she is. And he kind of starts throwing hints like there was a, a guy and a girl traveling together and that guy killed one of my men kind of thing. And I, I blah, 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 blah. And puts two and two together, obviously. And then James comes back with the medicine and initially holds her at gunpoint. He's like, hey, put the gun down. Give her the medicine and we'll take half the deer. And he's like, well, I don't want her to get away or whatever. And he's like, well, we're going to follow her after we get her the food or the medicine and see where she goes. Because she's obviously going back to Joel and we need to kill him. That's what we're worried about killing. Revenge. Yep. But uh, So she gets medicine to Joel and it, it's... So great that she finally gets it to him. And then, you know, within a day or two, the people show up to the, I guess, street where they're hiding and start searching the houses. So she's telling Joel, puts a knife on his chest and he's finally awake a little bit. She's Mm -hmm. like, you stay awake. People are coming. If anyone comes down here, you kill them. But she's like, I'm going to lead them off. So she like barricades the door with a dresser and takes the horse and leads them away. Yep, and as she's running away, um, they shoot the horse. The horse falls out from under her feet. Um, She kind of falls to the ground a little bit unconscious. They initially start looking like they're going to kill her, but then David comes in like, nope, I want her alive. Uh, You keep her alive. Bring her back to the camp. Go kill Joel. Mm -hmm. And so then we see the people going after Joel, and we kind of get the dual scenes of that, and then we see... Ellie waking up in a like kennel kind of thing in a basement and you see that it's like a butcher shop kind of area down there and she's looking around and she's like oh there's a human ear on the ground they're probably eating humans (laughs) (laughs) you know David confirms that the town of course running low on food they decided to start feeding everyone in the town people that have died without the town knowing it yeah but it turns out they are just a giant group of cannibals and yeah it's pretty great and uh while that's happening uh people find joel and joel ends up going on like a murdering rampage kills a couple people and awesome interrogation scene <laughs> yeah there's an interrogation of him talking to two people trying to figure out where ellie is and ends up taking those guys out and going for ellie and while this is all going on david finally snaps because ellie is just not giving in to what he wants and she breaks his finger so he's like you know what he get brings james in and they go to kill her and she announces that she's infected and shows them her arm Mm -hmm. yep and then ends up kind of distracting enough to be able to kill james real quick and then run away from david while he starts like trying to shoot at her and she runs out and he's chasing her and we get this whole like diner scene where he's chasing Ellie through the diner and she's trying to be all stealthy while a fire is happening. Um, we get this really uh, brutal and tragic scene with uh, David capturing Ellie and like climbing on her and saying like he likes it when they struggle and being super disturbing and creepy in every single way. Yeah. He's essentially going to take advantage of her. Yeah. And I'm not going to go further than that. Yep. And then she gets an upper hand on him and brutally, brutally murders her out of just absolute fear and disgust. And she's just like 
Freaking this guy's out. face. Dude. Yeah, she is. She is. Uh, she has this big old knife and is just slamming it onto him and blood spattering. And she's just freaking out. And it's all in a burst of just like adrenaline fear is the best way to describe the way that she attacks him. And then she escapes out of there, and Joel runs up behind her and grabs her, and she thinks she's being attacked again and she starts freaking out and he's like it's me it's me and like holds her and their embrace together is so beautiful that moment where she's like "Ah, i just went through the most horrible thing i've ever experienced in my entire life and i was just about to be assaulted in the worst possible ways by the most disgusting human being to ever exist on this planet and then you came out of nowhere and gave me a hug that i absolutely needed and you're still alive and thank god i need you more than ever right now don't ever leave me again like and uh, it's uh it's, it's brutal yeah the emotion conveyed in this scene is very powerful so it ends with them leaving and goes into spring where uh you know they're finally in Utah and going towards the building where the uh, Firefly base is. And on the way there, they have some great conversations about, you know, their past and uh, Joel. And then they come across uh, this building where they go up to see what's going on and they find a giraffe. Yes. And this giraffe scene is so amazing and so beautiful. And, it's one of these moments in this dark world and in this dark show that after one of the most brutal things we got to experience in the game and in the show, we get this beautiful serene moment where Ellie is the one who initially sees the animals and starts freaking out, like running towards them. And then Joel kind of like shows her that she can actually like go up and like feed the giraffes and pet the giraffes and get those experience and just seeing the like joy and happiness on her face of just like that serene calm moment of i actually am experiencing something beautiful and amazing and it's really cool because honestly uh was it i think it was last year for my wife's birthday i actually went up to colorado springs to see uh david and they have a uh, zoo there where you can actually experience feeding giraffes for yourself and we actually paid to do that experience because I wanted to have the last of us experience of feeding a giraffe. So, <laughs> and it was just as amazing as I experienced in the game. And I was like, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice seeing like this light moment in a show of darkness. But um, from there, they continue on and then they end up getting captured uh, by some soldiers who, once Joel wakes up, they end up finding out are the fireflies. And Joel wakes up alone and there's Marlene there. And he's wondering where Ellie is, and she explains that Ellie's already being prepped for a surgery. And what he ends up learning is that uh, the doctor thinks that the cordyceps in the brain can be the key to finding the cure, since Ellie is immune. And so they would have to do the surgery to remove it. In the process, it will kill Ellie. And basically, she threatens Joel, you're going to leave now, and we're going to do this because it's for the sake of humanity. Which... I hate in both the game and the show, like, why wouldn't they let him say goodbye? Like, why do this without her knowledge or her thoughts about this at all? Like, I know that, like, it was, like, Marlene believes that she would be down for this goal, but she doesn't even tell her at all that this is going to happen, that she's going to die. She doesn't get the choice. She doesn't get the option. And just not letting Joel have any goodbye, just like, here, here's Ellie's knife. Fuck off. It it should have been... I think an actual decision that Ellie got to make, which yes. we end up learning that's what Ellie would have wanted in the first place. But yeah. neither Marlene nor Joel at this very moment are willing to give Ellie that decision. Yeah. So Joel is going to leave. And I think I love this scene because it is so powerful and it is not a good thing that is happening. It is bad. Yeah. But Joel decides. I'm not going to let this happen. And so he ends up killing the soldiers he's with, and he goes on this rampage going through killing everyone in his way so he can get to Ellie. Yep. And while this is happening, there is this powerful music that is overshadowing everything else happening in the show. And it is played out that way to show that this is a bad thing that Joel is doing. Like yeah. It's not like it's, you know, we understand he loves Ellie, but the fact that he is doing this is not a good thing. And what the Fireflies are doing necessarily wasn't a good thing either. But 
I, I like the feeling that this scene gives. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. They do this. This run through of the hospital is it's visceral. It's beautiful. It's brutal. It's everything I wanted this scene to be because of how dark this scene is in the game. And I think they portrayed it extremely well in every way. And yeah, Joel gets to the operating room and the doctor tells him to wait for a second. He just flat out murders the doctor right there. Mm -hmm. And then the two nurses kind of step back and I found out after watching the episode that one of those nurses was actually played by the actress that plays Abby in the second game, which, which if you know, you know, we're not going to go into it. Yeah. We won't spoil season two. <laughs> <laughs> but so Joel gets Ellie out of there and the ending of this show, or the, I guess this last episode is mm-hmm. so powerful because it shows Joel leaving and it shows him get stopped by Marlene in the parking garage as he finds a vehicle and it shows him have a quick conversation and she's holding a gun to him and he's holding Ellie. And she's like, you can't just leave you know, you're think about what you're taking away from humanity. It's just really powerful. But then from there, it cuts to Joel driving in the wilderness with her getting away. They're heading back towards Tommy's base. Mm-hmm. And Ellie, you know, they finally, the car runs out of gas and they're heading towards Tommy's area. And Ellie stops Joel and says, you know, what happened back there? You know, and because like he gave her a little glimpse of when she first woke up of what happened. Uh, like they, there was other people that were there. He kind of lies to her, saying like that there was other infected people. They weren't able to make a cure. There's no way to make a cure. So we're really heading to Tommy's, and she says to him um, after they stop, they run out of gas. That is everything that you told me true. And then it shows a cut to Joel carrying Ellie, having the conversation with. Uh, Marlene. Sorry, Marlene. And uh, turns out he had a gun, so he shoots Marlene in the side and she falls over. He puts Ellie in the truck and then goes back over to Marlene and she's like, wait, 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 just just let me go. Just fine, you can leave. Just let me be. And he just goes, nah, you'll just follow her. And he kills Marlene right there. Mm -hmm. And then it cuts back to him going to answer Ellie's question. Yep. Is what everything you told me true? And he's like, yeah yep. i promise it's true and she's like okay, okay. cut to black yep uh end of episode uh yeah so like we said this and this was a really honestly like this is one of our longest episodes so far but this is like a really long series and for us to go over the entire series in less than an hour i think it's still pretty impressive but uh i guess you, you got the cliff notes <laughs> yeah what what are what are your favorite moments of the show and like what are the some of the things that you wish you would have seen or like adaptation moments or whatever so i guess some of my favorite moments i think a lot of my favorite moments were moments that were changed from the game, which is odd. Like I love episode three with Frank and Bill. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause in the game, like you never get any backstory except oh, yeah. minus a couple notes. Yeah. Uh, and then I do love every scene that Pedro and Bella are in together. They just play so well off of each other. They, they definitely don't feel as close as they should be like in the game, but they are still have a, a nice relationship. Yeah. In the show. Uh, I guess some of my other favorite moments are a lot of the infected moments. And then, uh, you know, like I said, uh, Tommy moments in that final episode, I think was really good. Um, one of my favorite moments is a moment that was always like alluded to and talked about and something that we all thought we were going to get in the second game, but never did is, um, a moment with Ellie's mom. And it's actually played by Ashley Johnson who voices Ellie Mm-hmm. and yeah we get to see ellie's mom <laughs> that is so i love that scene so much that was so cool seeing her like pregnant during the apocalypse and a zombie attacking her while she's giving birth and having her like fend off a zombie while also trying to d- deliver a baby at the same time i'm like damn <laughs> it was intense <laughs> uh it's 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 so fantastic and i i absolutely love that um like i said and you said too the bill episode is absolutely fantastic it's so just amazing in every way 
I love the different adaptation they had with that. I, I loved the Left Behind episode. I wasn't expecting that at all. I wasn't expecting them to go talk about Riley. I think I expected talks about Riley, but to actually have an entire episode dedicated to the DLC was really interesting to me. And I was like, wow, I wasn't That's expecting nice. that. Um, one of the things I do really, really wish that we had more infected in the later episodes. And I really mm-hmm. do wish we saw more clickers and more bloaters and just some of the things needed to be like some of the one episode things needed to be two. Like, I think we needed two episodes with Henry and Sam. I think we needed two episodes with Tommy. I think we needed another episode with Tess. Um, yeah, it's a, kind of like what I was saying earlier. Like, they definitely the show needs more infected. Mm-hmm. It's unfortunately that there's not as many scenes with that. But also, we need a lot more character development and screen time from a lot of these side characters that only got one scene or one scene or one episode cameos. Like yeah. it's, it's sad seeing these strong, like these powerful characters from the game, and though they hit the main story beats, we don't get as much time with them to grow. And you know, yeah. newcomers to this material aren't going to get as much love like, out of it as people that have seen the game. Another the thing, game. That, like a lot of people said, it was missing that they really wanted is they really wanted. Um, most people were mad that they left out the entire scene with uh, Ellie and David fighting off a zombie horde by themselves and them having to work together and kind of building a little bit of trust between them before his awful betrayal because that was something in the game that we didn't get in the show where there was actually some good moments with him before his treacherous moments so it was even Mm -hmm. more drastic in the game than it was in the show yeah absolutely i i totally agree so yeah it's i guess it it's kind of funny us talking about things we didn't really like about the show and i guess the things we didn't like are things that aren't present in the show like everything that is in the show was well done like i don't think i have a complaint about anything that was in Seriously, the show. they did every death perfect i think they did sarah's death perfect tess's death perfect honestly i love bill and frank's deaths even though they were different from the game henry and sam's death was perfect like david's death was perfect like uh marlene's death was perfect like all the like main points of the game and the main character deaths and like the main traumas of the game i think they're portrayed better than any adaptation i've ever seen before well, and I think a lot of the character moments are very powerful as well. It's yes. just nice seeing seeing those moments where Joel and Ellie do kind of grow together mm-hmm. and other characters interacting with each other. I, I love all the interactions for, you know, even though we didn't get as much development as I'd like. But I guess, do you have any final thoughts on the show? Um, final thoughts? I, I, I know they did announce that there is going to be a season two and it is going to be about um, Abby and the second game. I am uh, I'm both looking forward to it and not looking forward to it. Um, both I know both you and I both have pretty similar stances on the second game where we love the game, the gameplay, the visuals, everything like that. But the story is a lot more brutal and a lot harder to get through. And it is just, uh, it's so much darker. <laughs> it's it, it's not it's not a bad story. The way it plays out in the game, it is just very tough. And yeah. it could have been reordered differently. But just uh, be prepared. The second season is going to be very interesting yes. uh, without spoiling anything. But yes. um, I'm looking forward to seeing how they adapt it and if they change anything, what they change. Yeah, me too. Um, But yeah, I think like we said before, this is something we say we uh, both really, really say that we just absolutely love and that everyone should watch. Um, And we really think if you haven't played the games, you'll especially love this. And if you played the games, you'll love what they did, but you'll will be missing some small things. Yeah, a lot of the story beats in the show will hit harder if you haven't played the game. If you've played the game, you're still really going to enjoy it. And it is this this story has great value to it. And I yeah. think it is worth watching. And it's just a well put together TV show. So I guess that's all I have to say about yep. it is go watch it. And for everybody who's making adaptations, this is how you do it. This is how you change adaptations. This is how you rework them for uh, TV instead of video games. Like the changes they made didn't 
piss anybody off. I haven't heard anybody be like, there wasn't this, there wasn't that. Like people are like, I wish there was this, but no one has any faults with the actual show itself for anything they did, which is incredible. Yeah. I think the only fault I've heard is, you know, some people think the show does feel quite rushed at some yes, point. And yeah. I mean, I guess I brought that up earlier. Not a lot of character development. So it feels rushed sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, I think but yeah. that's pretty much everything. Um, next week. Oh, shoot. What I? What do we have next time? Oh, don't know. Let me look at the list. <laughs> uh, it'll probably be, I think, uh, oh. your next pick, which is Palm Springs. Yes. Yes, that's a really, really fun one. And that one is on Hulu, I remember, if I remember right. Hulu. So, yeah, look forward to that, and we will see you next time. Bye.